Hello YouTube. In Skyrim we play from our own perspective, the Dragonborn of Legend. In the game we see things unfold from our eyes, we see the ancient dragon Alduin return, see him resurrect the other dragons on a mission to presumably destroy or perhaps rule the world. Now, while the story from our perspective is quite clear cut, quite black and white, over the past few days I've gotten fascinated with a thought experiment. What were the events of Skyrim's main questline from the perspective of Alduin? Did he know that we were the dragonborn at Helgen and if he didn't, why attack Helgen at all? And then when did he become aware of our existence as dragonborn and how is it that we already dealt a pretty bad blow to his plans before we even knew of his plans in Skyrim? I aim to answer those kind of questions in this video. So let's roll the intro and let's talk about Alduin's perspective. So Alduin. Of course during the main questline we can never look directly through his eyes so some of this is going to be speculation to an extent. But I think most of it is pretty realistic as you'll see. Now the moment we see Alduin for the first time in the game at Helgen is likely less than an hour after he came back into existence, millennia after being banished out of time by the ancient Nord warriors during the Dragon War. If you want a bit of a recap of the Dragon War watch the video in the description by the way. When we see his banishment from the past in the main questline, this came as a complete surprise to him. From one moment to the next, he simply no longer existed within the universe, banished millennia forward in time. Generations of mortals had waxed and waned in this immense period of time, but to Alduin, it was basically an instant. When he came back to the world at the throat of the world, his place of banishing, to him it was as if only seconds had transpired since his banishment, meaning that he must have been quite surprised to find that not only were the mortals that he'd fought moments ago not on the mountaintop, his younger brother Parthenex was there, waiting for him. You see, the reason why Parthenex lives on top of the throat of the world is because in his own words he was waiting for Alduin's return. He knew where Alduin would emerge after his banishment, but he didn't know when, and so Parthenex waited on the mountain for thousands of years. Now, we know that despite Parthenex waiting for him on the mountain, Alduin would still come back to the world, meaning that Parthenex was not able to sway him or defeat him. Though I doubt whether or not Alduin was actually open to conversation with Parthenex at all, since just mere moments ago in his mind, you know, just before he got banished, he was still cursing Parthenex's name for his betrayal. Now I've always interpreted this meeting on top of the throat of the world to mean that the dragon roars that we hear at the beginning of the game during the executions at Helgen are likely sounds of Alduin and Parthenex fighting and Parthenex inevitably losing out, which is why we see him so ragged and wounded during the game due to this fight with Alduin. After the fight, Alduin makes his way down to the surface of Tamriel, likely to see what the current state of the world is. Has it been 10 years, 100, 1000, maybe more? Are his other dragon brothers still around? Is the dragon cult still around? The mortals who worshipped him? Those are the kind of questions that must have gone through his head in these first minutes. Leaving the throat of the world towards the southwest, the first thing he sees is the fortified town of Helgen and he lands in the town and likely when he notices that his suspicions are confirmed, the humans don't submit to his will, don't fall on their knees in his majesty, his dragon cult is gone, he starts attacking and when we translate some of the things that he says while wrecking Helgen, he says, those who do not bow will be devoured. And here we have a very little interesting bit, because unlike what most characters would have us believe in the story, Alduin is not out to destroy the world in Skyrim, albeit not yet. You see, Alduin as firstborn of Akatosh, first of the dragons, has a very specific function in the Elder Scrolls universe, to eat the world, or the current Kalpa. And his destruction of the world will start the next world. His coming generally signals the end and allows the next world to be born. How exactly he does that, the whole devouring thing, we don't know but what we do know is that it is not his current goal, nor was it his goal in the past. You see, we learn from Parthenex that one of the reasons why he defected to the side of the humans is because Alduin shrank from his destiny and started seeing himself as a god ruler of the world, fit to take Akatosh's place, instead of serving under Akatosh and being the one responsible for ending the world so the new world can be born. So why then do we keep hearing from every side that he wants to eat the world while I am claiming he doesn't? Am I an idiot lore YouTuber? Yes, but at the same time I have evidence, so just listen, okay? Because nobody else at this point on Tamriel knows this. 
You see, people like Esbern, who are learned in the prophecies and histories of Tamriel, know that Alduin is the World Eater, and that his coming SHOULD announce the end of the world. They interpret the defeat of Alduin millennia ago as mortals who staved off the end of the world for a time, just not forever. But that really wasn't the case, as Alduin had long since strayed from the path of being the World Eater, and instead tried to rule as a god over humanity back in those ancient days, no longer content with destroying the world, but wanting to rule this world. But this is something most people in Skyrim don't know, but we know is very true. Let's go quickly through some of the evidence before we continue. Us, us agreeing that Alduin does not want to eat the world is very important for the rest of this video, so let me get some evidence for you so you are on the same page with me. Alright, Exhibit A, Parthenax, who through his dialogue says that he joined humanity because Alduin wanted to claim Akatosh's lordship over the world instead of eating the world, which is what he was made for. Instead, Parthenex tells us that Alduin started to see domination and ruling as a god as his birthright, and assumed that it was his destiny instead of eating the world. This is why when we speak to Parthenex, he keeps saying that Alduin thinks that he is fulfilling his destiny, and he never actually says that he is fulfilling his destiny, because Parthenex also never in his dialogue says that he has a problem with Alduin destroying the world so the next can be born. Instead, he always says that he has a problem with Alduin trying to rule over the world as a god. Meaning that Parthenex, the one who saw all these events unfold years ago and now again when Alduin has returned, at least believes that Alduin is no longer on his destiny to eat the world but instead tries to rule the world. So he shrank from his destiny. This is why he helps you. Now, Exhibit B. When Alduin resurrects Saloknir, the first dragon that we see him resurrect, the first thing that Saloknir asks in the dragon language is, Alduin, my king, has the time arrived to restore your ancient dominion? And Alduin replies, yes, Saloknir, my loyal champion. This means that the whole reason that he tries to revive the dragons is that he wants to rule, not eat the world, because you don't need those other dragons to eat the world, unless that's some part of the lore that we just haven't been told. Also, Exhibit C, during multiple fights with Alduin, he always says stuff in the dragon language in the spirit of the world is mine, I will dominate you, that kind of thing. Never anything about the world needing to end. So, let's agree that the people in Skyrim telling you that Alduin is there to eat the world are unreliable narrators, as Alduin himself is planning nothing of the sort. But the legends about him do say that he will do that, even though Alduin himself has shrunken from that destiny. Alright, so Helgen destroyed, Alduin flies off. We as the player are about to do our own shenanigans and we don't really know where Alduin goes. But I have to conclude that what he does now is most likely fly off to see the state of the rest of the world. Are there still humans who worship him? Where are his fellow dragons? Are they still around? He most likely tries to answer those questions and also answer the question just in general, of what kind of world have I been dropped into? Because at the end of the Dragon War, when he was banished, he still had masses of human followers, loyal dragon priests and many dragons at his side. He has no idea what happened to them at this point, he just returned. In fact, while the Dragon War took place in the Meredic era, dragons themselves continued to be a pretty common sight around Tamriel until the Akaviri Dragon Guard, the predecessors of the Blades, started hunting them down and masked years later, in the latter years of the First Era, thousands of years after the Dragon War. Yes, many had been killed by the humans after the Dragon War, but they only truly disappeared after those hunts by the Akaviri Dragon Guard. While Alduin obviously did not know that, as it was years after his banishment, he must have known that the vast majority of his brethren were still alive after the Dragon War and thus likely flew out to search for them. And while we make our first steps into the world of Skyrim, you know, go to Riverwood, then go to Whiterun, Alduin will have discovered that almost all of his brethren are gone, his worshippers have all but disappeared and are in tombs now, and if he wants to conquer the world, he will have to do it all over again, as not much of his original lordship still remains. Now, it's very likely that Alduin during this time found the dragon Mirmilnir, the first dragon that we fight in the story, alive and in hiding. Because in the lore, he never resurrected Mirmilnir. Rather, Mirmilnir had long been alive and had been sighted up until the early years of the Second Era on Tamriel, never killed by the ancient dragon guard. It's likely that because Alduin returned to claim lordship over the world and the two of them spoke, Mirmilnir then felt confident to come out of hiding and attack Whiterun's watchtower, where we eventually kill him. And it's relatively likely that it's here, in this conversation with Mirmilnir, that Alduin himself might have learned of the existence of Bleakfall's Barrow's Dragonstone that we retrieve in the game. 
You see, the Dragonstone is not just a random thing that we get from the ruins for shits and giggles. This thing is far more important than you think, because after the Dragon War, those humans who followed Aldwin, the Dragon Cult, buried the dragons that were loyal to Aldwin who had been slain during and after the Dragon War, knowing that Aldwin would one day return and then could resurrect them. They recorded the burial spots on this stone and even translated on the back it says, Here lie our fallen lords until the power of Aldwin restore. They made this map for Alduin so he could find the places where his loyal followers were buried and what a coincidence, they put the map in the very first ruin that Alduin would likely see when descending the mountain. Unfortunately, there is no one to greet Alduin when he got off the mountain and nobody to tell him, hey, it's there, there's a map of your loyal friends that you can resurrect. It's likely that he found out that this map was made, if he did at all found it out, in his conversation with Mirmolnir, and funny thing, virtually the only prerequisite to fighting Mirmolnir at the Western Watchtower is to take the Dragonstone from Bleakfoss Barrow, meaning that by the time that the two spoke and Mirmolnir came out of hiding, the stone was already gone, and instead of knowing exactly where his loyal brothers were buried, Alduin had to go and look for them himself, because the map was gone, stolen by you. We likely stopped the part of Alduin's plan, or rather the plan made by his followers for his return, just before he would have been able to first figure out where the map was hidden. I personally always imagine that when Mermonir attacks the Watchtower, Alduin goes to Bleakfall's Barrow only to find his Draugr defeated and his map stolen. Great. And now he has to manually look for his fallen brothers, and this is seemingly why resurrecting them takes so long, and why Delphine can predict where Alduin would be, and how you, on foot, can intercept him, as with wings he could easily visit all the places with burial sites within a few days or at least a week, depending on the size of lore Skyrim and the speed at which he can fly. So it's quite likely that at this point he has to manually search for them, and this search begins at the moment that he and Mirmolnir finish speaking and he discovers that the Dragonstone is gone. Although it's also possible that he discovers this later if Mirmolnir doesn't know about the Dragonstone, in which case he still has to go and look for all his burial spots manually. It's now that basically a sort of cat and mouse game begins, where you start taking out the dragons that he just resurrects, while doing the first couple of missions of the game and going to the Greybeards and meeting Delphine, that kind of thing. Now, by the time that you intercept him at Zaloknir's burial mound near Kynes Grove, Alduin has already heard of you as Dragonborn, likely because of Mirmolnir's death, which he should have noticed after a while, and he likely found his soul gone. He knows that there's a Dragonborn out there, he doesn't know who it is, we can even see this reflected in the dialogue after resurrecting Zaloknir, as when he sees you, he expects a Dragonborn hero, but instead he just sees a mortal who likely just began their adventure. He even mocks you in his dialogue that you don't even know the dragon language. You may be a dragonborn, but he sees no dragon in you. Those are his literal words. He doesn't see you as a threat anymore, and the moment that he sees you, uh, he just commands Zalokni to kill you after his resurrection and then flies off to resurrect more dragons. Big mistake. As after this moment, when Alduin learns of Zalokni's fall sometime later, it's likely the first time that he will truly see you as a threat and likely makes a mental note to actually kill you himself next time, as he underestimated you the first time. It's quite possible that at this time he starts looking for you actively while resurrecting the dragons, but Skyrim's a big place in the lore, and at this point in the game you mainly work in secret with the remains of the Blades, Delphine and Asburn, so he would not find you. Instead, he keeps looking for dragons to resurrect and loyal dragon priests who still possess their lich body to help him out. Because at some point during these events, Alduin also makes sure to at least post some dragons and a dragon priest at the portal to Sovngarde in Skulduffen. You see, his being able to go to Sovngarde seems to be part of the method of eating the world and destroying the world and making sure that the next world will come. But instead, he goes there to eat the mortal souls to strengthen himself, which again seems to be part of the ending the world method, but he simply uses it to replenish his own strength and gain more strength in order to achieve domination over the world. Anyway, it's around this time when we discover Dragon Wren, obtain the Elder Scroll in Blackreach and speak to Parthenex. By now, Alduin knows of you and he wants to kill you, as he sees you as an obstacle at this point. At this point, Parthenex even warns you that dragons, especially Alduin, are tuned to the flow of time. If you will use the Elder Scroll at the Time Wound to learn Dragon Wren by viewing the past, Alduin will feel this, as he will feel a disruption of time and he knows that you are a threat now. So Parthenex warns you that if you go through with your plan, Alduin will come and he will attempt to destroy you the moment you return from the past. And so it happens, as when you peer into the past, Alduin feels a shiver through time and he now sees the signs. A Dragonborn keeps killing his loyal follower dragons and now the old time wound peering back to his defeat is opened. 
There can only be one explanation. The Dragonborn is at the throat of the world, so he hurries himself there and the two of you fight. A fight that he expects to win easily judged by his confident dialogue, but one that he loses in a pretty humiliating way. And he then flies off in order to go to Sovngarde to recharge and upgrade his power with more mortal souls. Now, at this point we're in the endgame though, and Alduin likely thinks himself invulnerable in Sovngarde, assuming the obscure location and the guards at set location are enough to keep you out of the portal. So when you do manage to get there with the help of Odoving and enter Sovngarde, it must have been a pretty annoying wake-up call and likely one that fills him with at least some fear. Especially once the mists that he casts across Sovngarde to harvest the souls of the mortal dead are removed by the Dragonborn and their ancient hero allies in Sovngarde. At that point, he must have known that something was up. Then, he suddenly gets challenged to battle and he accepts not being able to fly away to any other place. And that will mean his end. Even in his final breath he proclaims, I am unending, I cannot end. And indeed, his soul does not get absorbed by us, the Dragonborn, and it's likely that his soul instead is returned to Akatosh or perhaps waits outside time to send him back eventually, reformed and renewed, perhaps in his original image, when it's truly time to end the world and he can actually fulfill his actual destiny. And that was Skyrim from Alduin's perspective. Quite different from my usual content, but a blast to make and I really hope that you enjoyed this. Honestly, this was really fun to make, so I hope you enjoyed it again. Now if you did, consider liking the video as that's how YouTube decides whether or not this video is worthy or not. That being said, all there's left for me to do is to vocally thank my top Patreon supporters. Mr. Bernardo Binda, His Soul, Gabriel Binda, Doji, K Legend M, King Chris, Lance Vandertooth, Volkyr of Argonia, RP the Beast, Devin Mattingly, Rakai and Sword of Bushido. They and all the others on screen make my videos possible and for that I am very grateful. That said, I'll see all of you in the next Elder Scrolls lore video. Probably next week. Bye bye.